The leagues of Votan are the dwarven warriors of the 41st millennium. Once a type of abhuman, this strand of human mutation has deviated and developed away from the Imperium, and was up until recently happy to stay that way. Unfortunately, the events outside of their territory have forced their hand, and these mysterious squat leagues have stepped out of the shadow to force everyone to stop tearing the galaxy apart. With thousands of years to catch us up on, let's find out the history of these new players in the galaxy. Known as Kin, the people of the Leagues of Votan are short, powerfully built human-like beings. Having broken off from humanity thousands of years ago, the Kin may share some aesthetic similarities, but they stand apart as their own people and are clearly distinct. Whilst a lot of their history is now lost to them due to the passage of time, the Kin hold some first truths of their origins as gospel. One first truth is that millennia ago, the Kin's earliest ancestors left their ancestral homeworld for the harshness of space aboard generation ships. It is believed that this homeworld was pre-imperial terror. It is also held as a first truth the kin set out into the stars as miners, charged with prospecting and exploiting the riches that the heavens contained. Another first truth is that the kin were a cloned people from the beginning of their histories, taking to the process from their first day and that the iron kin have been with them since their earliest days also. These machine intelligences bolster the forces of the kin, their artificial minds and manufactured bodies dedicated to aiding their flesh and blood fellows. Whilst they are able to survive as their core cerebral unit alone, the bodies of an ironkin hold as much to them as our own do to us, and they opt to repair any damage they take, rather than replace broken parts or limbs. They are, in all respects, kin, apart from in actual blood. Regardless of that, to a kin, their metallic parallels are considered equal and valued members of society and fight to protect an iron kin as they would their more biologically based fat brother. Whilst it's unclear why the kin fleets opted to plunge deep into the galactic core rather than return to the heartlands of humanity space, the kin made the move. As they physically separated themselves from the rest of humanity, their bodies and physical forms were artificially altered. Stable mutations known as clone schemes were introduced into the kin's gene pool, giving those born with them denser musculature, tougher bone structures, higher red and white blood cell counts, and exceptional core strength and higher stability. Whilst it seems likely that this change was introduced to prepare the kin for their new harsh environment at the galactic core, there's also the possibility that they were preparing for a fight whether that's an enemy encountered, or to defend their homeland once settled. The kin's mutations go beyond these enhancements, however, with some clone schemes benefiting from infrared vision, resistance to extreme temperatures, or even greater endurances in the stronger gravities. Many of these enhancements manifest physically, with some kin exhibiting strange colored eyes or hues of skin, craggy subdermal layers, or even chemical-scented body odour. Whereas the Imperium would see such visible mutations as something to shun and avoid, the kin wear them as a badge of honour, just as their ancestors did before them. Alongside these physical enhancements, and the introduction of cloning and vat-birthing a fresh kin, clone schemes were also introduced that would ever so slightly affect the souls of their kin causing their presence in the warp to seem a little dimmer. Due to the control that the kin have on their genetics, there are no surprise psychers that emerge amongst their people, with only those with the appropriate psychoactive clone scheme being able to activate the League's barrier tech and interact with the warp. All of this comes together to protect the kin from physical mutation, psychic manifestation or demonic possession. It is extremely rare for the kin to feel any pull from the temptation of chaos, and hostile psychic abilities struggle to find purchase on them. We've talked a lot about kin and iron kin, 
But then what are the VOTAN? More than just the name on the front of their codex, the VOTAN are an important part of kin life and rarely spoken of in the presence of outsiders. Ancient machine intelligences, the ancestor core, or the VOTAN as they are also known, are beyond complex, containing the entire knowledge and history of the kin. This includes, but is not limited to, standard template constructs, philosophical teachings, military theory, and the blueprints with which to clone more kin for future generations. With the vast knowledge that these cores contain, it's unsurprising why the Leagues would want to hide their existence from outsiders. In the 40k universe, where guns are plenty and everyone is ready for a fight, knowledge and understanding are a rare resource. One that when stockpiled as they are within a Votan, become a tasty target indeed. The Votan are therefore heavily guarded, with oath bands of Enhir Hearthguards and the war engines of the Leagues standing guard over their ancestor cores. Some are buried deep in vaults, or kept behind impenetrable force fields at the heart of a kin stronghold. Despite all this heavy protection, as well as the robust construction of the cores, there have been some occasions in the League's histories where they have been lost. A five century long culling of orcs began when an orc war passed through Votan space and made planetfall on the hold of Oriac. After the Greenskins overran the Iron Gate Kindred and tore apart the Ancestor Core housed within the League's hold, the Grand Orion Compact swore a grudge so fierce and widespread it immediately went to their top of the list to resolve. For 500 years, the kin tracked, hunted and slew every single orc that was involved in that invasion, only resting when the last grot was slain and their grudge was answered. Even when they're not attacked or corrupted, the Votan cores are slowly deteriorating. These grand machines were not designed for such long-term and exclusive use, and the intellectual and moral dilemmas that they have been faced with over the thousands of years of League history have added to the AI's strain. Each day, more and more information is added to their already extensive libraries, and as their storage is beginning to fill, the artificial intelligence can begin to slow. Some Votan have also developed quirks from their interactions with generations after generations of living minds, and now exhibit facsimiles of developing personalities. These changes, and this slowing of their thinking, means that now when the Votan are asked a question, it can take them centuries to answer. So if that's the Votan, what are the Leagues? Well, to begin with, they were a military force established to protect the Votan cause as the kin pioneers set out to make a new life for themselves. Over time, these military Leagues became mutually beneficial allied bodies, expanding their scope to include mining operations, trading, and other prosperous endeavours. Now, the Greater Leagues are the size of some star-faring nations, each a power to be reckoned with, and still as battle-ready as their origins dictated. Each League differentiates with their speciality, and it is not uncommon for multiple Leagues to join together in joint ventures, where certain Leagues are more suited to a different aspect of an overall job. The Greater Thurian Leagues are grand fighters and mercenaries, for example, whereas the Trans-Hyperion Alliance are more renowned for their explorers and voyagers. Each League holds sole claim over the ancient heraldic colours and logos of one of the ancestral mining ships that first transported those original kin to the galactic core, with each kin in the League bearing these schemes and sigils with pride on their armour, clothes and war gear. To the Leagues of Votan, their history, their ancestors and their past grudges are all held as sacrosanct. The ancestors are watching. This idiom is both a reminder that kin should always live up to their ancestors' expectations and also a reassurance that the ancestors live on in the families of the kin. 
It can be a battle cry, a warning, or a blessing. To a kin, an insult is never unanswered. All is remembered in the leagues, and when opportunity arises, past discretions, insults, or attacks upon the league are responded to with a force equivalent to that dealt. With a little more push added to warn those in the wrong not to test the kin once more. No one, not even the forces of chaos, hold a grudge like a kin can. With advanced weaponry, unique technologies, and some redesigned old classics, like a dwarven style bolt gun, the leagues of Votan aren't a pushover when it comes to defending what's theirs. We'll be covering their expansive and eclectic armory on the channel soon, as well as a more deep dive into the major leagues. But for now, this is where we'll be leaving the leagues of Votan. If you've enjoyed learning about the dwarves that dwell in the galactic core, consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. It really helps us to continue what we're doing. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.